This video tutorial shows 3PL's how Magaya software can help with creating reports. We'll see some of Magaya's many different warehousing, commercial, accounting, and other reports. Each report is easily customizable and many of the functions mirror those within the Magaya lists, including choosing columns, filtering, and saving them. There are two main report structures in Magaya. The first are predefined reports that can be found in the reports menu and within the actions button of many different transactions. The second are list generated reports where you can group by one column and then narrow the data in the report. Let's take a look at some example reports in Magaya. The commodity list can be seen as the center of the warehousing section. The commodity list has all the items from every single transaction in Magaya. If we click on the Actions button and go to Reports, we see many different types of reports that we can choose. Each of these options are related to the columns within the commodity list. For example, let's choose Part Number. Since we chose by Part Number, you'll see in bold all the different part numbers. Each line represents where this part number is in Magaya. If we double-click a line, we see the related transaction. In this case, we see that this part number is linked to this warehouse receipt number here. For a 3PL, this report is very useful. If you add columns related to the transaction numbers that this item could be associated with, you can see everything at one glance. When you select the line, you can right-click on it and go to the history. The history will show you all of the transactions that this item is related to. Just click on this line here and then click the Go To button. Now we're at the warehouse receipt that this item is related to. Now let's take a look at the inventory item definitions list. In here we see a summarized view of all the part numbers. When we click the actions button, we have two options for reports. The first is other reports. Just like we saw in the commodity list, you can choose by a column. The second option are predefined reports. For example, the in and out detailed report. In this report, you can see a listing of part numbers and again a detail of the items. You can also see the related transactions with these items. You can double click on any of the lines to see the related transaction. The difference between this report and what we saw in the commodity list is that this report shows the ins and the outs for particular part numbers. This is very helpful when you want to know the beginning and ending balance for your inventory. The in in this report represents that this item came in through a warehouse receipt. Notice that even though it came in through a warehouse receipt, it may have already left. So that means it went out through a cargo release or a shipment. Please note the data you see here is based on the dates that you choose and the filters you have set up. We'll talk about filtering the reports a little bit later. So now let's look at locations under warehousing. In the locations list, you can see all of the locations or positions within a warehouse and zones. Zones could be a particular area in a warehouse or a warehouse. When we click the Actions button and select the Reports, we can choose by a column again. Let's go ahead and select By Zone. Now we have a Locations by Zone report. In this report, we have two different warehouses, each with their own set of locations. We've added some columns to show item details within the location. You can always do this by clicking on the Actions button and choosing the column. We'll see that a little bit later too. Now let's take a look at some other reports. Let's start with Purchasing. The Purchase Order list will show you all of the purchase orders in Magaya. When we click Actions and select Reports, we can choose by a column. In this example, let's choose by Seller. So now we have a Purchase Orders by Seller report, and we have Vendor of Vancouver as an example. This seller has four purchase orders for this date range. If we double-click on a line, we can see purchase order details. Please note, in order to modify this purchase order, you'll need to go to the purchase order. In order to go to the purchase order, you can just right-click a line and click Go To. Now we can edit the purchase order as needed. The sales order list will show all of the sales orders in Magaya. When we click on actions and choose reports, we can select any column within the sales order list. In this example, let's choose by buyer. 
Now we have a sales orders by buyer report. This one shows each buyer and all of the related sales orders. Again, you can double click a line to view the sales order details or just right click it to go to it. Now let's go to tasks in Magaya, particularly task history. In here, we see a history of all of the tasks in Magaya. These are electronic tasks you can send to other employees or our plugins such as WMS Mobile and the Final Mile app. In the task history list, let's click the actions button and go to reports. Let's choose by employee. Here's the tasks by employee report. You'll see a grouping by employee and all of the tasks underneath. Just double click any line to view it or right click it to see the history. This report is particularly useful because you can see the time it took for an employee to finish a task. Now let's take a look at some accounting reports. All of the accounting reports are available within the reports menu, but you can also go to each accounting section, for example, invoice list, click the actions button and select reports either by columns or predefined reports. The predefined reports are the reports that are also available within the reports menu. Let's take a look at some profit reports. In this example, we'll be looking at profit by customer reports. Notice we have three report listings for profit by customer. The first one is a summarized report. The second one is a detail by transactions, which means that it will list all of the transactions by customer. And the third report will show charges for the transactions the customer is associated with. Note that these charges may or may not be on accounting transactions. For example, if a storage fee was entered into a warehouse receipt, but the invoice wasn't created yet, this report will still show the charge. Let's look at a profit by customer report. Here we have the profit by customer report. Each customer is listed with their appropriate expense, income, and profit. You can also see certain percentages. This predefined report can be further customized by clicking on the configure button, where you can modify the header information, choose which transactions to include, whether or not you want to show the entities who bring in only 80% of the profit, and other details such as including invoices and bills. Note that you can also customize fonts and numbering. Now let's look at a unique report called the Profit by Operations Report. Let's click Reports, go to Profit Reports, and here we can choose either a summarized version or a detailed version. Let's look at the detailed version. This report is predefined to show you different types of operations. For example, we can see pickup orders, warehouse receipts, cargo release, and shipments. You can also see other things such as other incomes and other expenses. For each operation, you'll have a transaction, which you can either double click to view it or right click on it to go to it. For each transaction, you'll be able to see the related transactions. For example, you can see this cargo releases invoice by double clicking on it or right clicking to go to it. Even more, you can see the income, expense and profit at one glance. This report is very helpful and unique because it shows you all of the transactions within a specific date range according to the transaction's date. So now let's look at some customization options within reports. In this example, we'll go to our commodity list, click Actions, select Reports, and choose By Part Number. Again, this particular report is by a column. Let's first start with the Configure button. Here you can update the header information, choose whether or not you want the report summarized, modify any fonts and colors, and update numbering. Now let's look at three steps to finish your report. The first is clicking on Actions and choosing your columns. In here we can choose columns related to the commodity list, or we can click the Add Columns button and add related columns from different areas. We can also add script columns too. The second step is selecting dates or filters, such as a standard filter or an advanced filter. Lastly, you can click on the Save button and save the report. All saved reports show up in the Reports menu under Saved Reports. When you save a report, you can recall it later 
and then just change the dates or other information. Be sure to check out the knowledge base for step-by-step -step articles you can print or email to help you use the software fully. Be sure to see our other videos in the 3PL series or contact our training and implementation department to optimize your use of the software specifically for your business. Thank you.